for brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. He says to present your what a living sacrifice? Your body. Did he say present your soul a living sacrifice? Did he say present your spirit a living sacrifice? Did he say present your opinion a living sacrifice? Your emotions a living sacrifice? No, he said your body. We like to get all deep and spiritual. Well, you know, I was just led of the Lord, and uh, I just had to do what the Lord told me. Knowing good and well, the Lord did not tell you to do something sinful with your flesh. My God. Present your flesh, your body, a living sacrifice. That means you've got to die to it because your body wars against the spirit. The Bible tells us that the spirit and the flesh are always fighting against each other. That means when you sacrifice your body, it means that you're telling your body, shut up, I'm going to allow my spirit to leave me. Amen. Sometimes, if you're sick, you have to sacrifice going to work so that your body can get well. When you sacrifice going to work, that means I'm sorry, I have taken priority, and the priority is me getting well, so work is just not going to happen. When you sacrifice your flesh, what you're saying is, I'm sorry, I know you want to do this, but I have priorities, and spiritual well-being is my priority. Pleasing God is my priority, so I'm sorry, flesh, you're not going to be able to have another drink. I'm sorry, flesh. You're not going to be able to go over to such and such's house and spend the night. I'm sorry, flesh. You're not going to be able to smoke this and inject that. I'm sorry, flesh. I know that might be what you want to do, but you are not the priority. Yes. The reason we get in trouble is because we have desires. We have temptations, and we decide, we talk ourselves into it. Well, the Lord will want me to have the best. Yes. Well, they can say that because they're in this situation. They don't know where I am. Well, they haven't been through what I've been through. We make excuses for the things that we do in our flesh when it all comes down to dying. Kill it. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Kill it. It's an enemy against you. Because when you leave this world, your flesh is not going. That's a sign. It's a trap. Flesh, you're trying to make me change my destiny and you ain't even going there. That's how you're That's a setup. I know I ain't going. But since I can't go to glory, I'm going to make sure you don't go either. Since I'm not going to spend time with God, I'm going to make sure that you can't spend time with God either. The flesh is holding you back. The flesh is a bad, abusive boyfriend that's only interested in its own desires. That's what your body is. That's what this is. What you got to do is say, uh-uh, no, 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 no. What you're going to do is you're going to glorify God. Because if you're going to be hanging on to me for 80 years and doggone it, you're going to do what I want you to do. And what I want you to do is what God wants you to do. But we become slaves to sin. We become slaves to this stuff. It's going to fail you. It's going to rot one day. It's going to wrinkle up. It's going to get weak. Or you might like, you might think you're cute right now. You're in the mirror. You know, four hours late for church because you got to get right. You know, you're flexing. <laughs> Y'all know. I know how, I know, I know how I be flexing. <laughs> But my life 
pants are going to get shut off right. Lord, I'm just praying that you work a miracle on my behalf. Don't let the lights get shut off. And when the lights get shut off on Friday, we feel like God has forsaken us. God, I know that you're a healer and I've been sick. Lord, I just want you to heal my body right now, Lord. I just want you to restore everything. But if he doesn't, we feel like God's not there. This is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Savior of the world. He's facing crucifixion and he says to his father, if there's any way to get out of it, please deliver me. Well, we all know the end of the story. He still went on the cross. But he didn't deny that God was God. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, when they went into the fiery furnace, they prayed that God would deliver them. But you know what? He did, but they still had to go into the furnace. What if they had lost hope at the door? Well, I guess God ain't with us. They get ready to cast us in, and he hasn't delivered us. He hasn't called an earthquake. He hasn't called a hurricane to sweep us out of this place. So I guess God is not on our side. But if we read the story, the Bible says that the king saw four people in the furnace, and it was burning seven times as hot as usual. See, the enemy gets mad when he knows God is with oh, you. Yeah. Come on. And he starts Come punishing on. you with cruel and unusual punishments. You got it harder than everybody else. They had it seven times hotter than everybody else. But because they went into the fire, the Bible says that the king saw four. And all of a sudden, the same king who had built up all these idols, the same king who had denied that God, he said, there's a fourth one in there, and he's like unto the Son of God. Oh, now your amnesia is gone. Now you remember who God is. Because you see somebody going through something, but they're still victorious. You see them going through something, but they still are courageous. They're still coming out. God doesn't always deliver us from every single thing, but he'll get us through it. We got to stop giving up on God just because we're going through something. So what? Yeah, you're going to go through something. We all going to go through something. We're going to have our little boo-boos. So what? That doesn't mean that God is not God, and it certainly doesn't mean that you're not favored. What it means is you've got to learn how to die to your flesh. It might hurt not to be able to eat at Regazzi's every week. Now you got to eat McDonald's. It's okay. You shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. <laughs> it amazes me the things that get us all uptight. I mean, I think about the old days when people were raising children, women raising 10 and 12 and 13 and 50 children by themselves because their husband was all pulled off into slavery somewhere. You think they complained because they didn't have a candle? We, get all, we won't go to church. We get all depressed. They got to put us on medication. <laughs> Over the strangest, smallest thing. This is not small to us, but think about it. My phone is off. Y'all know we get messed up when the phone is turned off. <laughs> Lord have mercy. The world has ended. You can't text. You can't call. You can't do nothing. Oh, and don't let the internet and the TV go off. The cable, what? I only get 10 channels. What in the world? <laughs> Just 50 years ago, most of your relatives didn't even have a TV. Just 50 years ago, we get all pulled out and bent out of shape. We all at the altar. I need the Lord to pray for my finances. My cable is off. The satellite people have come and took my satellite. It's NFL season. Oh, Jesus. There's 